This week I've been brewing up a special episode for you guys, and we're going to talk about coffee. Hey guys, and welcome back to the South LA Recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to learn more about LA and South LA on the regular. For this month's conversation, we have John Kennard, the owner of Coffee Del Mundo right here in South LA. In this episode, we're going to dive into John's reasoning behind opening a coffee shop and how he's changing the community one step at a time through every cup of coffee. So John, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little tired. I have been going to the gym on a daily basis recently, so it's, it's an adjustment, um, but I'm doing good. So tell me a bit how you made that decision to open up a coffee shop right here on Vermont near 74th Street. Well, the short answer is God. Um, the long answer is that I always knew that I wanted to have my own business and I knew that it had to be centered around my passions, which some of which are cooking, traveling, uh, coffee. And so this kind of combined all of those things into one. And I wanted a business that was made for my experience as a black and Afro Latino. I really wanted to create an experience that was designed to represent that. And so what better community than one that was exactly what I am. Um, my dad is black from Memphis slash Inglewood grew up. And then my mom, she immigrated here from Belize as a Latina and Afro Latina. So, uh, South Central, as you know, is pretty much 50-50 almost. And so I really wanted to submerge myself in a community and create something for our community. And so this was the ideal place um, for me. And yeah, people come into my shop or people say, oh, this would do really good in the Bay Area or Santa Monica. Or yeah, eventually we, ho we may be there, but at first we're going to serve our community first. Okay. And that's why it was created here in South Central. Uh, you guys are... Uh, coming across your third anniversary right here in your coffee shop. How, how has that journey been for you? What, what have you learned from it? And um, how does it feel to be crossing that 30-year mark now? You know, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy to say three years because um, I moved to L.A. in 2018. So I've only been in L.A. for three years a little over three years and that's kind of when I started my business. So it's kind of like, it's my LA flag that I'm here. I'm here to stay and I'm here for our community, you know? So it feels amazing and it has been challenging from the very beginning. I knew getting into this, that it was going to be a challenge. Look where we're located. We're located in one of the worst areas in LA, right? So not only are we talking about safety concerns and, and just foot traffic concerns, but we're also talking about um, the capital, the money per capita, the amount of disposable income that the average residents have here. A lot of people are in Section 8. So how do you create something that is for this community without breaking the bank for this community, but still being able to turn the lights on and keep the lights on, right? So it's been a very, very, very challenging and it's been very unique. Um, but the beautiful thing is that the community recognizes us and they, they support us. And that's why we're here because they know when they walk into our doors, they feel at home and they don't feel that when they go into a Starbucks, when they go into all of these European establishments that have all of these drinks based on European diets, right? And they come into our establishment, they're like, wow, you don't even have any European drinks here. Exactly. It's made for people of color. Uh, so you can pick anything off the menu and feel at home or, or and it won't you know, have all those harmful effects for your diet because we took all of those things into consideration. What's what's one of the hardest things about running a business in South LA? Um, I would say we've had a lot of issues with um, homelessness and uh, there's a lot of, not human trafficking, but there's prostitution that we're literally beside a hotel and the amount of things that we've seen and just we've even had some of our customers comment, you know, it's a really, really, I love the place, but it's kind of in a bad area, right? It's dirt, there's trash. I, I've spent many days sweeping up our entire block because no one else is doing it, right? We have street sweeping, but they never come on these streets. They don't really care about South Central. So the hardest thing is making people understand that there is something here. This is the treasure as well. And there 
is love that is going to go into this place and that we're going to be the center of it and let's expand out and take up the whole street, right? So I encourage people, hey, this is your community. There are plenty of problems. So as long as you create a good solution, like a coffee company that's designed for our diets, people will come to you and you will be able to stay within your community and create a lifestyle for yourself. I really appreciate you sharing that because it it takes a lot more than development, a lot more than, like you said, a name change to really change a community. And I think a lot of it is going back and understanding the history of the community, understanding what we have been through, both Black and Latino residents in South LA, and understanding how we have to move from there to go forward. And I'm kind of curious, now after passing this three-year mark, um, where, where do you see Coffee Del Mundo going like in the next six or seven years? I see us uh, having multiple locations, kind of like how you see boba time. You just go there, you have the best boba, all kinds of different cool drinks, and you just, you're in and out real quick. That's where I see Coffee Del Mundo. So being able to visit Colombia and getting Coffee Del Mundo, vis- visiting El Salvador, visiting, you know, England, and we have a location there and we specialize in, you know, recipes that bring out the natural flavors of the countries. Uh, And then also seeing us in your local mom and pop retailers in our bottled cold brew version. So we've been working a lot on that with the food scientists to get that out to the public. We do our bottles in store, but we're working on getting those into retailers so you can get Coffee Del Mundo 24 seven anywhere you want. That's great. And then tell us a bit about your product that you have. I believe that you can, we can actually buy whole beans directly from you, right? Yes. So we are vertically integrated. So we import raw beans from different farms around the world. And yes, I do get a chance to visit them. So that's my traveling in there. Uh, And so we import and we roast it all here. So you can get the freshest whole bean coffee in the city here. Uh, And then if you're not a person who likes to make your own coffee, then we also have our cold brews that you can get here as well as our Cape K-Cup Keurig pods. Um, And one of our most popular items is our world sampler tour, where you get three options, you get seven different countries that you get to travel to with your taste buds uh, from our selection of farms that we work with. COVID-19, that's been something that has undoubtedly affected a lot of businesses, but it has unevenly affected a lot of black and Latino businesses. Um, how has the pandemic been, uh, I guess, treating you over the last almost three years? Uh, I would say the initial challenge here was the fact that you're building in an area that people look at and say, there's nothing there. And it's a, it's terrible place to have a business. A lot of people that when I, you know, shared my vision, they were like, oh no, don't do it there don't do this, don't do that. So that's why I told you at the very beginning, a lot of this had to do with God and my faith and my, my beliefs. Um, you know, a lot of people are missionaries and they go out to different countries and different lands, but I'm like, look, we got enough problems here. So God just said, this is where I want you to be. And so this, I see it as my mission and my calling. And I'm able to touch so many people's lives through a cup of coffee. Am I talking about God for, to, with everyone that walks through my doors? No, but do they feel the presence of something outside of themselves that maybe has a little more to do with than just coffee? Probably. And so that's where maybe other conversations are introduced. But at the end of the day, I do believe it's my mission and my calling to be here to serve this community, Um, starting with a cup of coffee. And hey, who knows, maybe they'll trust me with a little more things uh, in the future once we do well here. Uh, But at the end of the day, man, um, it was a challenge and a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of negative actions towards us and so at the end of the day when you are operating in your purpose it doesn't matter because what is a closed door for someone else may be wide open for you and so I just say follow your purpose and if it's meant if what will be will be great well it it sounds like you're uh brewing up a storm I I had to throw that in there I'm sorry (laughs) hey I haven't heard that one before that's a new one I can add to the list of my coffee dad jokes (laughs) <laughs> well, John, thank you so much for just taking some time to share your story and your God-given mission. 
uh, with us here uh, in, in South LA, South Central. And um, most definitely, I oh, you know what? Is there anything that you'd like to share? Anybody watching this who may be considering walking through your doors today, anything that they should know or try uh, when they come to your uh, shop? Uh, our number one seller, I will have to say, it, we are the world's first vegan Vietnamese style coffee. So if you do get a chance to stop by, please check it out. It's where the only place you can get it in the world. Um, and again, we're 100% dairy free, so you don't have to worry about anything. And we are more than happy to give you some suggestions. If you're not a coffee drinker, we love converting tea drinkers into some amazing coffee. Uh, but that's pretty much all I have. And I just appreciate your time and, and reaching out to learn more about me and the and what we're doing here at Coffee Del Mundo. So truly appreciate it, brother. And that wraps up this episode of the South LA Recap today. I hope that you guys learned something new with John and maybe even visit his coffee shop right there on Vermont near 74th Street. That's it for this episode, and I'll catch you guys around on the recap. <laughs>